What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, smash this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in part one of our series of packing for a dive trip, we went over checklists and why they were very important. But now that we've done the checklist and we've gathered all our gear to pack it up, what is next? Should we just pack it in a box and go on our trip? Or should we do a little bit more in-depth investigation to see if our equipment is going to be good to go while we're out on a dive trip? So now that we got our checklist together and we've got all of our equipment pulled together, it's time to pack it up to go on our trip, right? Well, not so fast. We're actually going to do a thorough gear check. We're going to test our BC. We're going to check our regulators. We're going to check our mast straps and our fin straps and all that. With the BC specifically, we're going to be testing the inflator and the valves themselves. We're going to see if the pop-off valves are working good. We're also going to test to see if we can orally inflate and power inflate the system as well. This is very simple. You just simply hook your regulator to a, BC, or to a tank, put your low-pressure inflator hose to it, and simply inflate and deflate. Make sure it's going to hold air for a lengthy period of time. Make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Now, if you want to learn more about how to do that, check out the SSI Equipment Techniques course. Not only do we teach you how to wash your gear and to take care of your gear and store it, we're also going to teach you those little tips and tricks that you can do out in the field to make sure you get the best prolonged life out of your equipment. Now, once we're done with the BC, we're going to move her over on to the regulator, and we're going to test several different things with the regulator. We're looking for holes in the diaphragms. We're looking for holes in the mouthpiece. We're also testing in the IP and the cracking pressure as well. Now, if you don't have a magna helix gauge or an IP gauge, you may need to go to your local training center where you purchased your equipment to get them to do this test for you. Now, it's a very simple test. Most shops like ours, we don't charge a dime to check the pressure of your regulator, but you want to make sure that it's set up and it breathes properly the way it needs to be when you're out there diving. Once you got that, then it's time to load up your gear, which leads me into part three of this series of pack and dive gear for a trip. In part three, we're going to go over what should be packed in a general luggage, what should be packed in your carry on and what other items you may want to take for redundant systems. So definitely stay tuned for part three. If you got any questions of part one or part two, drop me a comment down below. I'll try to answer those questions the best I can as quick as I can as well. Guys, if you like this series, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share this series as well. Guys, I really hope you stay tuned because we've got a lot of great tips coming in the near future on how to pack for dive trips. I know a lot of people's worried about weight, but a lot of people is also worried about what equipment they should be taking on a dive trip. So definitely stay tuned for that. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Take care, God bless, and I will see you in the next video.